I wanted to look at, as my topic today, I guess a topic that is very important to being a Christian. And for me at times, probably some of the, one of the most important things to me in my life, and that is having peace and joy in your life. Having peace and joy. I want to turn to Psalm 29. Psalm 29, verse 11. And when we think of peace, right, what, what's the opposite of peace? War, right? War. You can have a war in your life. You can have, I mean, we could we can live in a nation where, but now fortunately we've only had, you know, back 10 years ago we had an attack against us. We really, for the most part, our nation's pretty secure. You know, there may be certain areas and you might want to not go that you may not feel safe in our country, but for the most part, right, we live in a, a safe society. I feel at peace. I can feel at peace just going out and walking at night, you know, where I live and feel peaceful, sitting on my porch, you know, I can go to the store and I don't feel like when, it, when I'm going to the store that somebody's going to jump me as I get into my car when I leave. Now, I've known that to happen. I've known good friends who've, where her mother was actually somebody followed her from a store all the way back to her house and killed her. And, and, and took her and just threw her credit cards. Isn't that terrible? And so, so, so for the most part, though, we don't have situations like that. It's not like it's a common occurrence. If it was, you know, we might be, everybody may have guns. We may be, you know, ready <laughs> to defend ourselves. So we live, for the most part, in a peaceful, peaceful country. We have peace. Of course, peace can extend to, to different things, right? I mean, you could have uh, peace in your job, or you could have war at your job. Anybody ever had a war at work? If you work somewhere and, you know, you, maybe they're just not seeing the things the way you are, or they're, you know, you can, you know, because we try to live by God's laws, but a lot of folks don't. And so work could be a place for people where, hey, I go there, I don't, I don't feel any joy. <laughs> Actually, I don't want to go, right? You give in the morning, like, ah, you know, if I'm, it's going to be the same old. So you could have war at work. You could have a war in your family, Unfortunately, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty good with my family, There's, but there could be at times, right, in, in different families where we don't get along with others in our family. And there could be tension, there could be wars. I mean, I know when I first came into church, I had some really <laughs> difficult times explaining why I'm coming to church on the Sabbath day and, you know, and why I'm coming to this cult <laughs> of a church. So, so, so there could be wars in, in, in a family where... There's no peace. So there's all kinds of situations, and even in a church, right? There can be churches where folks say, I don't want to go to church today because so-and-so is going to start up, and it's going to, you know, there's, there's, there could be war even in the church, and, you know, and, and when, when there should be peace and joy. Here in Psalm 29, in verse 11, it says, The Lord will give strength to his people. The Lord will bless his people with peace. So God gives us peace. He will bless us with peace. And, and, and that's a wonderful thing. That's, that's what I want to talk about today, is that God gives us peace in our life. Even when I'm at war, right? Even when I have difficult times, and I've had plenty of them, God gives us peace. I was trying to think about when I was preparing this, you know, some times in my life when I really wasn't at peace or when I was afraid, <laughs> you know, and, and that's kind of the opposite. And one time, and there's, I'll give you a couple examples, maybe more, but a couple examples. One is where I used to, when I was in school, I was in high school as a, uh, I guess, probably a freshman in high school, and I rode the bus to school. I, had, I went to a school, or I rode the short bus to a, to a school that was... Uh, down, down on the other side of town from the other people in my neighborhood. So I went there because it was advanced classes and I was gullible enough to think that that would be <laughs> good to go to those classes. And so, so, so I, would get, I, would, I would come home and ride the short bus and I would get off the bus at the bottom of my neighborhood where there, there was a, there's a hill that would go from the bottom of the neighborhood up to uh, a road and I would turn left 
And it's probably like a block up the hill. So I'm walking a block up a hill, then I would turn left and walk another block to my house. And this walk for me, as a, as a, as a freshman in high school, became one of the most afraid walks I could, I could possibly have. I had fear. And, and, and there's, there's a couple of things that made me afraid of this walk. You know, I mean, I, you know, I, had, I, liked, I liked school. School was fun. I mean, there's times when I was afraid at school, like if there was a test, right? <laughs> be like, oh, there's a test today. You know, you kind of get me a little anxious. But for the most part, school was all right. But getting off this bus, I would walk up the hill, and as I was probably like maybe halfway up the hill, someone started yelling at me from somewhere to say, hey, you so-and-so. I can't repeat it, right? But, <laughs> they, they, you know, this is church, right? So I'm not going to say what they said. But they say, hey, you, you sorry this. I'm going to come down there. I'm going to kick your butt. I'm like, I got my backpack, I'm like walking up, you know, walking up the hill, and somebody's yelling at me, and it echoes because it's kind of like, like a hill, I'm like, you sorry, so-and-so, and, you know, I, and again, I'm, I'm like not myself, I'm like a little skinny freshman in, in, in high school just, just walking up the hill, why is somebody yelling at me, taunting me, saying they would have hurt me? You know, now I would probably be like, get on my phone and call 911, and like, hey, somebody's bothering me, you know, do something about it, you know, because I'm an adult, you, that's the way you handle things, but there, there I was like, man, you know. I'm just not going to look. <laughs> I'm not going to look up. I'm not going to look what they're saying. And I couldn't tell where they were, they were yelling at me from. And this would happen every day. Right? You know, I guess they were waiting on me, right? Somebody was, you know, I don't know who it was. It could have been you know, some little kid. It could have been an adult. I don't know who it was, but they, they, were, they had a good, strong voice. Made me think, you know, I don't want to <laughs> run across this person. So, so they would yell at me. I would be afraid walking up the hill. And then I got to the top of the hill, and I would turn left. And my house was only a block away, and then there was a dog in the yard, at the top of the hill. And so, you know, you get to the hill, and then, you know, dog gets up, and you're like, oh, you're like, oh, you're like and it's like, oh, okay, there's a dog up here. Just got you yelled at for no reason, you know, somebody insulted me all the way up the hill, and then the dog, and you have to stand your ground, right? There's a dog, you know, you know he's going to guard his territory, and we'll walk by with my backpack all the way home. So that was afraid, that was the time that I was afraid, that I remember. And now, I wouldn't be afraid now. Right, I mean, I thought about going and walking up the hill. The hill doesn't look as big as it used to, you know, when you go back and look at stuff. So I wouldn't be afraid walking up that hill, and if somebody was yelling at me, I, you know, again, I'd just call the cops or say, somebody's harassing me, what is, what's going on? Because, you, you know, you handle things differently. So I was afraid, and I really felt afraid. Another time that I was afraid, and this, was, uh, this, you know, that, that, this had to deal with the church I was going to, and this was when I was a little bit young, younger, and I was afraid... Probably every night I would stay up, stay up, you ever stayed up at night afraid of something? I mean, maybe, or, or anxious or whatever, but I was afraid or anxious or whatever and couldn't sleep. And this is like, you know, I'm nine or ten, shouldn't be doing this as a nine or ten year old, being afraid. But I was afraid they, because of something they, they taught in the church. And they taught that about blaspheming God's spirit. Now, I understand what that means today. I'm not going to go into it today, but I understand what that means and, and what it all means. But for me, I'm thinking maybe I'm going to say some. You know, I'm going to say something wrong, or, you know, I'm thinking about it, it's like, I don't, don't want to do it, you know, and sometimes you're like, you, you don't want to do something, it's like, maybe I could do it, maybe I could say it, you know, it's just weird stuff that would go to my head, and I was afraid that I would blaspheme God's spirit, and, you know, I read what it said in God's, what does it say in God's word about that, right? So there's no forgiveness, <laughs> right? And so I'm thinking as a little kid, man, I don't want to be not forgiven, because I believed at that time that, you know, there's ever burning hellfire, right? And that's, and that's what, that, can, that can scare a little kid, too. So, that was, that, I, so I, was, I was up at night probably for a few months dealing with that. And, you know, you, you grow up, you deal with stuff, you get over things. And then I, finally, I learned actually what it meant. And I'm like, okay, well, I now I understand. It's not what I thought. So there's times where I've been afraid. Even, even in my adult life, and I'll go into that a little bit later. So, you know, times we can be, be afraid, we can be at war, we can be at unrest, but God gives us peace. It's that word in the Psalms. Let's go to Psalm 34. Psalm 34, verse 11. It says, Come, ye children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Who is the man who desires life and loves many days that he may see good? You know, I guess, you know, I like many days. I want to live as long as I can, I guess, because that's just built into me. And if, you, and if you want to live long, you, you want to see many days, what do you do? He says, keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. So peace 
It's something, you know, God gives it to us, but something we have to pursue. We have to go after. And it's, and it's, and it's, and it's, and it's all kinds of things. So I thought about it as I, walk, as I was walking up that hill, I could have been like, come on down here. Let's go on. Let's go at it right now, right? I could have done that. And that, it probably would have meant somebody big would come down there and beat me up, right? That, that, that would have led to more war. That would have led to more problems. So it says, you know, watch your, you watch your tongue. Seek peace. Do things that are peaceful. Or even in, like, work. I've had problems with somebody at work where, you know, I've got to be quiet and just do what I've got to do because seeking peace is something. It's, it's, a, it's a way of life. And, and, and God's laws, God's ways are about seeking peace with each other and, and you know, loving one another. And so something we do is to seek peace. Psalm 85. Psalm 85 and verse 8. It says, I will hear what the God the Lord will speak. For he will speak peace to his people and to his saints. You know, God speaks peace to us. And we just had the Passover what, a couple weeks ago. And during the Passover, we read from what Christ said. And when I hear Christ's words, and, I, and we can read God, you know, his words, and we'll look at some today, he speaks peace. And, and, and any time that I've ever been maybe a little upset or upset, I go, to, I go read what Christ said, and it's peaceful, and it's good stuff. And so it says right here, it says, the Lord will speak peace to his people and to his saints. But let them not turn back to folly. Right? Because that's, that's easy to do. You know, you can, you can read the words of peace. You can seek peace. And then you can, well, go back, break God's laws, treat people disrespectful, or get into arguments with people. You know, there's things we can do to where we can, we, we can go back to folly. We could, uh, you know, I could go, I, I thought about it, I could go back to that, that, that hill right now as an adult, walk on that hill and say, all right, I'm ready. You know, they probably ain't even there anymore, right? So come on down. But, you know, I'm not going to do something like that. I'm going to seek peace. I'm not going to go do things that would be counterproductive. And says, so surely his salvation is near to those who fear him that glory may dwell in our land. Turn to Matthew 11. Matthew 11, verse 25. And these are the words of peace. I said, well, I was going to read some. We're going to read some right now. Some words of peace from our, from our Savior what he tells us about having peace and having joy. So at that time, Jesus answered and said, this is Matthew 11, I'm sorry, Matthew 11, verse 25. At that time, Jesus answered and said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and prudent and revealed them to babes. Even so... Father, for it seemed good in your sight. All things have been delivered to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father. Nor does anyone know the Father except the Son, and the one to whom the Son wills to reveal him. It says, Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Rest peace. He says, I will give you rest for your souls. And okay, there's so many things that can cause unrest in, in our life that, 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 that can distract us from, from God's goal. What God's goal for us is being in God's kingdom. It's the whole purpose of life. And, and when people who criticize Christianity, like, like the new atheist, they, they, they criticize the wrong Christianity, right? They, 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 they don't understand that God, God talks about peace, that God has a plan, that is a perfect plan for humanity to be born into his kingdom. And so when we have things like suffering, 
and problems in the world, which, which a lot of atheists and a lot of people who are, because who, I've known folks in God's church who said, you know what, this is, I mean, I don't understand. You know, something would happen where, you know, family member would die or illness, and they say, I'm out of here. So, you know, they would leave. I've known people to leave God. You ever know anybody to leave God's church because times got too hard? And they said, that God must not exist because why would we have all this pain and all this suffering in the world? Right? What, you know, if you know God's true ways, we know that God has a plan. And it, you know, it includes this life, which is difficult. But God, you know, he's creating winners, right? He's making us to... Uh, be part of his kingdom, so we have to go through some of these things. So there's things that cause unrest. Like I said, work, I've, I've had you know, work problems. Financial, you ever had a financial problem? I mean, I, I know when I had my cancer, I had plenty of money before I had my cancer, right? I, I had all, you know, I, I had good savings and stuff, and I was out of work, and I still money was coming in. That stuff's expensive. You know, when you go to have treatments and chemotherapy and all this stuff. And so I got to, my finances got pretty bad after a while. That was years ago, right? But, and it's like, hey, I went from, you know, from this to that. So, so it's, and it can easily happen with disease or uh, something happens to your car, right? I, I think about, like, my transmission. What happens, you know, what if, what if that goes out home? You know, what does that cost? Three place. You, you think what you get in your bank account. There's things that can happen that can affect our finances. We can lose a job. Or you can have a job. They got this job's great. All of a sudden, it's gone. And it's, that happens to a lot of people. So you can have unrest with finances. And I, I guess that's a lot of things that causes like marriages to break up, is, is finance, financial problems. And, and so that's one of the big things that, that, that people deal with. That, you know, that, that the way life is, it just kind of sometimes it happens. And, we, and again, we can have unrest, we can have a peace, and, and like I said before, like in relationships and families. I mean, there are certain people that, you know, I'm Christian, I love them, but I don't want to be around these folks anymore. You know what I'm talking about? I, because, because I know if I'm around them, it's going to bring up this old stuff, and or, you know, you don't want that. Right? So, so you can have, un, you know, problems with people. And that's, 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 that's the things we deal with. That, those are that's day-to-day stuff. That you can have a problem with a person at school or work or family or somebody. somebody and a lot of times it's somebody we've known that may be the closest, right? That we've known for a long time who may do something. And then there's some stress. There's some unrest in, in, in relationships. Disease. You know, I, like I said, I had cancer. I, disease for me was something that, that you know, hey, that's, that's a little bit of unrest. Especially when I first found that. I remember when I found that, and it's been like eight years, so I'm, 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 it's passed. But it could, and it probably will, based on statistics, happen again. That something's going to happen wrong with me sometime in my life, right? Somewhere. It's going to happen to everybody at some point, right? You're going to have something go wrong, and you're not going to wake up <laughs> until the resurrection, hopefully. And when I found out that when I found out that I had that the cancer in me, and that, that, that was a, that was a tough, you know, I talk about being afraid. So I was afraid walking up that hill, but I think I was more afraid when somebody told, you know, when, when I came out of the doctor and he showed me something like it was like about that big on the X-ray, and I looked at that X-ray, I was like, you know, he showed me the X-ray, I was like, I was like, that's inside of me, you know, and 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 and, and at that point, you know, the tears were almost there. And I was like, well, well, thank you very much. And he told me that. He said, well, you know, we'll get you to see somebody. And I walked out into the parking lot of this hospital, right, and could do nothing but cry when I found out that. Because you find out something like that, say, like, hey, I mean, I could, I could be dead in like a week or two based on what this person is <laughs> telling me because the doctor was being honest with me and stuff. And so that was a time where, whoo, that's not peace. That's unrest. That's dealing with a difficult situation. And it may even be worse for me if, if a family member had that. You know, if, you know, if, if one of my nieces or nephews, or, you know, and, and that's happened, and that happens. You know, I was talking about this before, and somebody I was, I was, I was talking about, they had lost somebody who was two, you know, just within a few days of me talking about this subject. And I was like, oh, you know, that, that, that happens, and that's, and that's tragic. And so we have disease. And for me, when I had the disease, the, the thing that gives me comfort, right, the words of Christ. 
And what does it say when you have a disease? And God, what should you do? What should you do if, if, if I have a disease? It says, right, go to the elders, be anointed, and then you'll, your sins will be forgiven. That's a good thing, right? <laughs> your sins are forgiven, and you put it in God's hands. And that's what I did. I, I, I was in the parking lot crying. And I said, you know, just, all right. And I called Clint Mahoney, minister from Birmingham, and said, hey, I need to come to your house right now. He's like, why? I was like, right now, I need to come to your house. And I went to his house that very day and said, I need to be anointed because there's something that big inside of me. And I, and, and, and I put it in God's hands. And, and you know what? From that point, even though I was afraid and had problems, I, I had peace. Because you can have fear and still have peace. You can have difficulties and have peace. You can be mourning for someone and have the peace of God. So, so, that, so that's, that's what it's about. That God can give us peace when there's so many things that can cause unrest. Let's go to John 14. John 14. John 14, verse 25. And these are, again, the peaceful words of Christ. This is God speaking to me, comforting things. This is what, you know, we read at the Passover. And for me, I feel like I'm there that, that night. When we do the Passover and we take the bread and the wine, I just feel like I'm there with Christ. And whoever's speaking or reading these words, I'm there with Christ. Because he is there with me, right? He's, he's with us right now. I mean, he's, he's, he's here amongst all y'all. And, we, and, 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 and when we interact with each other, I see it. And hopefully we can see it, that, that Christ is in us and among us. And that's peaceful. So here he, say, he tells us, verse 25 of, of John 14, These things I have spoken to you while being present with you. Now he's right there, you know, right there with him. He says, But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things. Right? The Father will teach you all things through the Holy Spirit. So he will teach you all things. And bring to you remembrance all things that I have said to you. It says, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Neither let it be afraid. So that's, that, that's comforting, because you know, there's times when I'm afraid. There's times when there's difficulties. And Christ says, I'm there. The Holy Spirit's here. He's with us in those times. I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm very comforted by that. And I'm, and I'm, and I'm, I'm grateful that we can have that peace. And you have heard it me say to you, I'm going away and coming back to you. So if you love me, you would rejoice because I said I'm going to the Father. For my Father is greater than I. And I think about joy and peace. And what if, what if, and, and this is like a lot of what is, right? What if my life was perfect, right? I was born into like a rich family, and never had any disease, was in perfect health, always had a good job, could do whatever I wanted to, always ate great. You know, just think of like, you know, somebody, oh, they get the perfect life, you know, you know taking vacation, cruising and stuff. And, and could you know peace without adversity? You know, and, and, I, and I thought about this, there's really no way to understand, the, to really truly understand what it is to have the peace of God, to act, to, except to have it in adversity, Right? Because then you know you have true, true peace. If I can, because I know, right, I, I, my, my parents are they're doing well, but there's, there's going to be a point where, where my parents are going to pass away. I know it. I'm going to get the phone call one day. It's as sure as anything for any of us, right, who, who've dealt with that or may deal with that. And I know it's going to devastate me. I, I tell you right now, it's going to devastate me. But I have God's peace that's going to be a part of that. And I want to know that peace because of that, knowing what, what his plan. 
God has for us. Let's turn to Romans 14. Romans 14. And Romans 14 gives us a, I guess, an outline, a, an example of how to be a peaceful person. Right? Because again, it's, you know, we, we, we established that we have the peace of God in our life. We, we, can, we can go to Christ. We can hear his words. He's, he can comfort us in all types of, of, pro, of, of problems or things we deal with. But now we have to be a peaceful person and to promote peace amongst each other. And, and this, this example we're going to read in Romans is talking about a church example. And, 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 and it's a good example. He's like, oh, you know, somebody, oh, why, you're not, you're, you're, church should be perfect. You should never have problems right in church. <laughs> but I've been coming to church for a while, and I've had people in church because of like a little doctrine or something about something that says in Genesis that had nothing to do <laughs> with what we're here on Sabbath day. They said, we're out of here. See you later. And they left. An argument about something petty in God's church. So this is about something that could happen like that. And, and to be a peaceful, for me, to be a peaceful per person is i got to prevent those things. Right? In the church, with, you know, you know cause and, and this right here will work in, in the workplace. This will work in family, this example. And it's actually being a peaceful person, right? Because Christ gives us peace, and so we should be like him. We should promote peace in all things. So here's the example. Romans 14. It says, Receive one who is weak in the faith, but not to disputes over doubtful things. And here's the example he gives. He says, For one believes he may eat all things. That would be me, right? I believe I can eat all things, like to eat. And it shows a little bit. He says, One believes he may eat all things, but he who is weak eats only vegetables. Right? Someone can, so, so if someone could eat only vegetables, they would be a lot, a lot thinner, probably a lot healthier than myself. Right? Somebody eats only vegetables, but I believe by God's word, God's word says, you know, he gives us a place, Leviticus tells us, there's animals you can eat. And he tells us the things that we can eat, and I feel, feel comfortable eating you know, steak or chicken or whatever God has given to, to us. But somebody could come in the church who believes, no, I'm a vegetarian. And I've known a few vegetarians, and nothing to get, you know. He says, let he, not him who eats despise him who does not eat. And let not him who does not eat judge him who eats. For God has received him. Who are you to judge another servant? Because we could do that. You know, it could be like a potluck and somebody comes, you know, and this is an example, and it could be other things. There's all kinds of things that people have maybe a difference of opinion of, right? I mean, I have different opinions with probably a lot of people on different things that have nothing to do <laughs> with God's word. But, you know, somebody comes into a congregation of a bunch of meat eaters, and they're a vegetarian, and, you know, you can, you can make the person feel uncomfortable, right? You, you know, you could know, be like, hey, look at this. You know, we've got some great burgers over here. Or we have some meatloaf. Try some meatloaf. Come on, it's good for you, you know. And, and we'd say, you know, God's word says you can eat meat. So you could be to a point for a vegetarian, a person who says, hey, I don't want to eat meat for whatever reason. Maybe I love animals. You know, I don't, you know, I don't want to die. Whatever reason they, don't, they want to be a vegetarian. And we could be like, you know, offensive to the person <laughs> or even, you know, make little comments. There's all kinds of ways you can offend somebody who has a different opinion about something like either eating meat and vegetables or just eating meat. Verse 10 of Romans 14. Verse 10. It says, But why do you judge your brother? Or why do you show contempt for your brother? Right? We can show contempt. And that's not peaceful, is it? So we have, we, we're supposed to have the peace of, of Christ in us. And, I, you know, and somebody could come in, and it could be a different issue, right? Because, I mean, I could be like, well, you come to church, you need to have on a tie. You know, I don't really believe that, but, I mean, you, you know, there's folks here without ties, and we're happy to have them, right? But you could be like that. You'd be like, you come to God's church, 
you got to have a tie on. And you could be like, you know, a person out of tie, you, may, you know, you could have like a rack of ties. Say, here, let me get you a tie here. You need a tie. Here, you need a tie right here. And, you know, and, and you can make somebody just feel very uncomfortable about something silly. And you, could, and you could push that issue, right? You could show contempt about all kinds of different things. He says, for we shall stand before the judgment seat of Christ, verse 11, for it is written, as I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. So then each of us shall give account of himself to God. Therefore, let us not judge one another anymore, but rather resolve this, not to put a stumbling block or a cause to fall in our brother's way. And, and, and that's, that's the main thing. You know, we could, we, could, we could put a stumbling block for a vegetarian. Because they, they come to our church, say, hey, Mr. Vegetarian, nice to meet you. <laughs> You know, you got to really try some of this meat that we got over here. We got some good, we got some good cooks in here. So you, you'll like meat if you, if you try You know, try this. And again, nothing wrong with being a vegetarian. That's what I said, you know, nothing wrong with, with eating all things. It's the contempt part that's the problem. It's not treating somebody peacefully. And again, this works in all situations. It's how, you, you know, it's being a peacemaker. Right? Because sometimes people are difficult. <laughs> Some people can be really hard to deal with. And I've learned it's better just to be peaceful and kind of, and kind of just, I'll just compromise. You know, I'll just compromise with this person. Okay, heck, we're not going to have no beat here. We're going to say, oh, eat vegetables. You know, if it's okay just to be, just to have peace to prevent, to pre- prevent a stumbling block. He says, verse 14, I know and am convinced by the Lord Jesus that there's nothing unclean of itself, but to him who considers anything to be unclean, to him it is unclean. Yet if your brother, verse 15, is grieved by the cause of your food, you are no longer walking in love. Do not destroy with your food the one for whom Christ died. Therefore, do not let your good be spoken of as evil. Right? Because we do a good thing in God's church. And the vegetarian is going to leave being. I'm sorry, folks. They just kept bothering me about eating meat. They're just evil. I mean, they, they, they can talk badly about you. Or somebody has a doctrinal issue. You know, and, 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 you, and people just, you know, I don't know, but there's something, there's, there's a difference of opinion, and, and, and people are speaking badly about you. People probably speak badly about me, <laughs> you know, and I don't know why, but, but maybe from things we've done, right? So we've got to be careful in how we treat each other in the church and to respect and not have stumbling blocks as it can be, especially, with, you know, with, with some doctrines or some, some difference of opinion we may have. He says, for the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. So that, that, and that, that's, us, that's us causing peace. That's us bringing peace to God's church. And, and that's what it's about. <laughs> you know, and that's what, that's what a church is about. Church is about working together. And we're, you know, we're all so different, aren't we, in the church? I, I've, I've met, you know, I meet people in the church that this all, we're all different you know what, we would probably not know each other or care about each other weren't for God bringing us together in this church, right? We would never have had a chance to get to know and to love those in the church of God except for God bringing us together. I think sometimes, you know, to really know what peace is, you've got to have a little difficulties to have the peace of God come from that. These things are acceptable to God and approved by Christ. Verse 19, therefore... Let us pursue, like we read in Psalms, let it, you know, seek after, pursue, is an effort, the things which make for peace and the things by which one may edify another. Pursue it. And, and that's the you know, same in church, work, whatever. It takes effort. It takes effort to be happy, to follow Christ. Go to Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4. Philippians 4 and verse 1. So that's that, you know, and that's the attitude. And this is the attitude the church, this is the attitude that Paul has here in, to, in, to the Philippians. And these were, these were a joyful people, <laughs> the Philippians. 
You know, there, there's, there's examples in Acts of singing in prison in, in Philippi. There's, there's, I mean, there's, these are joyful people see, that he's writing to in, in this church. And so here in, in chapter 4, verse 1, he says, Therefore, my beloved, and long for, brethren, my joy and crown, so stand fast in the Lord, beloved. Right? The church was his joy and crown. That's, that's what we are to each other in the church. We are each other's joy and crown, that we have joy in each other, right? So coming, church should not be something, right, where it's like, oh, I'm going to church. Man, I don't know. They're going to keep, you know, bother me about the vegetables. They're going, to, you know, they're going to do all this. Church should be, it's the Sabbath day. I'd like to sleep in, but I'm getting up. I'm going to head to church because I love it. I love those folks. These are good folks. These are the joy and crown of God. This is, this is, this is God's people. My joy and crown. So stash, fast in the Lord, beloved. Verse 2, he says, I implore Euodia and I implore Syntec to be of the same mind in the Lord. Right? To be the same mind that, that, that everyone is our joy and our crown. And I urge you also, true companion, help these women who labored with me in the gospel. Right? We're working together. We're doing, we're doing a work. Well, we're doing something that's beyond our small individual efforts. It is taking the gospel of Jesus Christ to this world. And we're doing it together as a church. And they were laboring. And he says, with Clement also and the rest of my fellow workers whose names are in the book of life. Right? Y'all's names are in the book of life. And we're fellow workers. And, we're, and, we're, and, we're, and, and, and it's more... Right, church shouldn't just be like, oh, I'm going to church and I got to do the, you know, get the normal setup and we got the, we got food and, uh, and you know, it's just the routine. It's not a routine. Right, it, it's a change of life. And, and, and it, has to be, it has to be that way a change of life, a change where we're, 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 we're loving each other, working together. We're in the book of life. In verse 4, after he says all this, talking great things about these folks in Philippi, and how much he loves them, how they should, they're working together and great folks, he says, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. That's, that's wonderful. Rejoice in the Lord always. And, 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 and again, these are good words, right? I can say, oh, yeah, these are great words, and mm, I'm going to rejoice. But when you really apply them to real life is when it really means something. And I know I told you probably a couple of times before where, where somebody had tried to kill me. I'm not going to get, tell you the story, but somebody had tried to kill me on the road. They remember from Auburndale <laughs> the story. Somebody had tried to kill me, and the aftermath is what I want to talk about. It's how I felt for probably about a month afterwards as I was, you know, awaiting a court date, awaiting to see when this person, you know, in court. And in my house... All of a sudden, and I shouldn't be this way, because I'm in God's church. I got God's spirit. I got his words. I got the words of peace. But I would hear a car outside, and I'd be like, whoa. I mean, they, because this person coming to get me, I file charges, right? You know, you file charges against a crazy person, what happens, right? And you don't know, but I'm, you know, I'm, all right, so, so I hear a door outside. I'm like, what's going on? They go look through the window, see if somebody's out there. I was like, okay, well, it's all right. Whew. Or I, I say, do I hear somebody walking in my backyard? You know, I was a little paranoid for a little bit, because, you know, I had went through Something that was, that was, for me, that, you know, ch changed me around. And I was nervous. And I was afraid. And I told myself, I said, you can't be afraid. Why are you afraid? Because God says, rejoice in the Lord always. And I learned that you can be afraid and still rejoice. And still have, have the go Because it's something, I guess, it was, it's just something that can happen, Right? And there's certain things that, you know, that would probably be afraid of, you know, like if somebody, if I brought like a tiger in here, on a, on a release, hey, meet my tiger, I, I, would you be afraid of a tiger coming in here? I would be, af I would be afraid to bring him in. But there's certain things we could be afraid of, right? <laughs> but we can still have that joy that takes us through it. But, you, know, you know, if a tiger comes after me, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, <laughs> to, I don't know what, but, you know, we can be afraid, but God will give us joy. I'm not afraid anymore. 
I wouldn't pray after you know a lot of prayer. Talk, you know, and, and this is what it is, right? It's, it's the God's people, the people that I that we rely on after calling and talking to a lot of people and praying with, with, with folks in God's church and talking it over and telling my story and saying, yeah, you know, you know, talking about it, talking to God about it, prayer, it went away. And the joy remains that God gives us. So you can have times that will happen. And again, there's going to be times that I know I'm going to be devastated. Something's going to devastate me. don't know what it is yet, but it's going to, you know, it's going to be there. But the joy is going to be from God. Because he says, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. So you can rejoice when you're mourning. Right? I mean, it's a, maybe inside, right? But we know we can rejoice. We can rejoice when we're crying. When we're sad. He says, let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. The Lord is at hand. You know, gentleness, that's, that's the working with each other. That's, that's promoting peace. Being gentle. Being a gentleman. <laughs> you know, I'm a gentleman. So I'm going to be gentle and be nice. It says, be anxious for nothing. So that's, that's the thing that got me, right? When I was anxious, I said, well, God's word says be anxious for nothing. So I had to pray. Ask God for that peace. And he gave it to me. He says, be anxious for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication... With thanksgiving, let your request be known to God. Oh, here's, that, that was the key for me, right? He says, don't be anxious. Let God know your request. With thanksgiving. So, you know, and, and that's what I always do. When I ask God for anything, I always praise him and thank him for it. Say, thank you for, for the answer. Thank you for what you do in my life. Thank you for helping me. Because that's what it says to do. And he says, in the peace of God, the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding. And people don't understand it. You know, people can't understand how how you know how can we believe in God with the things that we we go through, right? They don't understand it. You know, I mean, people have what? There's people have lost entire families driving to the Feast of Tabernacles. You know, years back, I remember that. And 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 the person who was involved. He stood strong. And there was that joy and peace in, in, in peace of God, which surpasses understanding. I don't understand it, right? It's, it's, but it surpasses understanding, but God gives it. He says, well, guard your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. Verse 8. He says, finally, brethren, whatever things are true, Whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. Meditate on, you know, think of the happy things. When you lose a loved one, right, we, we can, when we're sad, but you know what, think of the good times. You know, when, there, when there's turmoil, I'll, you know, I, you know, you got to have your happy place. And this is a reference to a movie, you know, Happy Gilmore, but he has a happy place before he shoots his golf or whatever. But I just talk about, but I, have my, I always thought, i got to have a happy place. And I think about my happy place, I think about the Feast of Tabernacles and the, t- and the times of the Feast of Tabernacles. I say, this is my happy place. This is when, like, things are good. Things is great. God is working. And that's my happy place, and I can, I can dwell on those things. You know, the happy times, the good things of God. So whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is a good report, might go to your happy place. If there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. So that's what got me through. My time of anxiety is like, you know what? I know I'm afraid, but I got good things to dwell on. Christ. The Father, his laws, his holy days, his people. And, you know, meditate. That's what we dwell on. That's what we live. He says, the things which you have learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do. Right? They saw it in Paul. They said, y'all do it. 
And hopefully, I, you know, I, we can see it in each other, right? We can see the peace of God in each other. He says, these do. He says, and the God of peace will be with you. He says, but I rejoice in the Lord greatly that at the last your care for me has flourished again. Though you surely did not care, but you lacked opportunity. Not that I speak in regard of need, for I've learned in whatever state I am to be content. So I know how to be abased. And Paul, he knew this stuff, right? I knew how to be abased. I knew how to abound, right? I know that I'm happy eating the steak dinner as much as I'm happy eating peanut butter and jelly, right? People, that's good peanut butter and jelly. I mean, that's all I can afford, <laughs> right? So I'm going to enjoy the peanut butter and jelly and, and, and as much as the steak. Going to be content, you know. But if I find myself with a steak, hey, I'm going to be happy with that also. But I'll be happy with the, with the peanut butter and jelly. He says, he says, I know how to be a base. I know how to abound. Right? He had the good times and the bad times. That's what life is about. The good and the bad. Everywhere in all things, I have learned both to be full and to be hungry. Right? I, I've been hungry. I'm hungry on the tofant, but I'm, you know, there's times where I've been hungry. Not as much as some folks, right? There's some folks who are hungry all the time. And they're in a the God's church. And they, they're maybe in another country where it's not, it's not as easy. It's easy for us to get food. You know, and, and, and there may be a time coming, and probably is, where it may, may not be so easy. And where we may be hungry. You know, where we're, we're milk's even higher than what it is today, and bread's high, and we just, we're just eating what we can. Right? But if we're hungry, or if we're full, he says, everywhere in all things I have learned both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. And this is what I'll end with. And this is what, this is what gives me peace, this is what gives us all peace. He says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. He's our peace and our joy.